Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're going to look at this uh, TBS article on the King James, New King James Version, give a final assessment of the NKJV that they give, and uh, maybe some interesting facts concerning the NKJV as well. So let's get started. This is from their April 224, April to June 224 issue of their a quarterly journal thanks to Bobby Kilman for sending this to me so Dr. Henry Morris who was on the North American overview committee of the New King James Version makes a powerful argument regarding uh, the King James or the New King James and so he was on the overview committee just like Nathaniel Urshan was says, I believe it's probably the best of the modern translations. Even so, after trying to use it and endorse it, I finally went back to the old King James. Now, this is Henry Morris, doctor, uh, one of the founders of the creation science movement, in a sense, convinced it's still the best in terms of poetic majesty, spiritual power, and overall clarity and readability, which I've done some videos on that. The readability of the King James, very easy to read. Um, the syllabic content is just very, very small. So in our assessment of the New King James, we asked the question, is the NKG an update and a revision of the AV, just like it claimed to be, or is it another translation? The answer is that it is a completely different translation, and that's what it said it was going to try to avoid. And that's what happens, because then you get copyrights and all this if it's completely different. It claims to be a successor to the AV, but it's either attempting to ride on the coattails of the AV to gain acceptance with those who are committed to the traditional received text. To that extent, it's actually a misleading translation. Because it says we're the fifth in the line of revisions, but it's totally different. Like from the 1611 to today in the King James, um, D.A. Waite, he said there's only 400 changes to the year. Most of the changes, people say, there's 20,000 changes. They would just spell joy, maybe, with an E-J-O-Y-E -E in 1611. And it gradually, the English language just dropped the E. And uh, things like that. They would do double S's that look like double F sometimes, like in happiness or something. And it gradually went. And so all these supposed changes are orthographical changes they weren't changes that had any significance so as christians we should have a zeal and a passion for the purity of scripture and i pray that's true for you if we do i have no doubt it will lead us to dismiss that new king james version and appreciate with heartfelt gratitude the av is the most faithful and accurate translation available today and so I did want to read in the end notes. Uh, it's got like nine end notes here. I wanted to read end note number two because I thought this may be interesting. And I may mention some of these other ones too. The original executive director of the NKJV, Arthur Farstad, was a majority text proponent, which is close to the received text, but not exactly. At about the same time as the NKJV was created, he collaborated with Zane C. Hodges and others to produce the Greek New Testament, according to the majority text. Nashville, USA, Thomas Nelson, 1982. Thomas Nelson used to publish a lot of good kind of uh, pro-received text, almost pro-King James stuff. Um, they're the ones that did uh, Pickering's The Identity of the New Testament uh, text initially in the 70s. So the team of translators, this is the important part I wanted to get to, working on that New King James Version did not favor the Greek received text. So here you go. It's supposed to be a translation from the received text, and they don't even favor it. Some were for the majority text, and some, possibly most, were for the critical text. None were received text proponents. At least seven of them, the New King James translators, also worked on the NIV. The preface makes various references that undermine confidence in the received text. So I remember, was it Farstad that was on the John Ankerberg show when one of the guys lost his voice or something on there? And that legitimately did happen. People try to say it didn't, it actually did. <laughs> 
But they said Farstad was actually very sympathetic to the King James guys. Now, M.H. White, uh, Watts, excuse me, M.H. Watts has written a booklet, the New King James Version, a critique. And I may have done a review on that. I think I did years ago. But it's worth getting. A lot of TBS's materials are free. Just punch in, go to their website. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, share it, in note number eight is Henry Morse is a creationist defense of the King James Bible. And so uh, that's in the back of like the Henry Morse study Bible. It used to come in its own little pamphlet. I've reviewed that. It's really good. And then those who wish to explore the issues further with the New King James, the New King James Version of Critique is actually on tbsbibles.org slash the New King James Version that I guess you can get see it in PDF or something. Just read it there. But you can also usually get hard copies of that as well. So, you know, in the end, it's way better than most you'd have to do like a new king james simplified king james comparison king james plus comparison kjbr comparison mev new king james comparison see which one would be better there but of the major translations esv niv nlt new king james much better but let's not settle for better let's get the best God's giving you the King James. We'll see you later. We love you. Bye-bye.